Hello all, welcome back. In today's session, we are going to cover a mediator that allows us to execute conditional statements in WSO2's Enterprise Integrator. And the mediator that we are going to cover is Filter Mediator. So when I say conditional statements, what I essentially mean is the if-else statements in a traditional programming language. Now, let me walk you through the use case that we are going to cover today. So we have a simple offload service defined with a, um, with a filter. Now we'll have, we'll define a simple API that will have a filter a mediator to check a particular condition. And uh, so that is gonna be, we'll receive a message uh, with some customer information and the payload will have a field called category. If the category of the customer is platinum, then we are going to provide him a set of discounts. And then the flow would proceed. So the flow would return saying the customer is eligible for certain discounts. If the category value is not platinum, in that case, the flow would move to the if, uh, the flow would move to the else statement and we would receive a response saying the customer is not eligible uh, for discounts. So this is what we are going to cover in the demo today. Now let's get into the demo. In order to explain uh, the simple use case that I just uh, explained, I've created a Maven multi-module project uh, with name sample 11. And inside that, I've created an ESP config project. Uh, I hope by now you are quite familiar with creating uh, the project structures. So uh, in order to avoid repetitions, I'm going ahead and creating the API directly. I'm clicking on the API uh, folder and click and uh, create REST API. I'm gonna give a name, um, which is uh, filter mediator. That's gonna be the name of the API and the context is gonna be filter. Okay, now click on finish so that you have a structure, a skeleton of the API here. Now, since we have to post data uh, to the API, you'll have to change the resource. So click on the resource and then you'll have the methods here and uncheck the get and check the post method. The next step is to drag and uh, drop the required mediators here. So in our case, it's gonna be filter mediator. So from the palette, I'm taking a filter mediator and dragged it here. Now it's about the configuration of filter mediator. There are two ways to configure the filter mediator. If you look at the condition type, it's a drop down having two values. The first one is source and regular expression, which means you'll define a source field from the request uh, XML or JSON and uh, you'll define a regular expression, which, which is basically the value that you're expecting in that field to match the condition, right? And the second one is an XPath, where you will define the path, the XPath to a particular uh, field in the request message, and you will configure the value along with it. We'll see the difference of these two options soon. First, I'm going to go with the source and regular expression. So before I step into the demo, let me show you the request and response messages that we are expecting in this particular demo session. I'll be demonstrating both XML and JSON versions of a request message. Now with XML, I'm gonna use a customer info XML having five child tags, and the condition is gonna be executed against the category field. Now once a condition is satisfied, I'm expecting a response with a tag called description and eligible for discounts. In case if the condition is not satisfied, the description will have value not eligible. Now let's start configuring the filter mediator. First, let me configure the source field. So this is gonna be the category field. So since my XML has namespaces, I'll have to configure path like this. So it's gonna be NS1 colon category. Now, along with the XML path, I have to define the namespace prefix as well. So I have defined my namespace prefix NS1 and the actual namespace value. Click on add to save it and then click on the OK button below. Now this is a configuration of the source field. Now in the regular expression field, you have to give the value that you're expecting. So in this case, it is gonna be platinum because I'm gonna give discounts to only platinum customers. So now that's the configuration of the filter mediator. Now let's configure the then and else blocks. So here basically what I'm gonna do is, I'll set a property mediator and set a value 
in both cases, I'm dragging a property mediator to the then block and repeating the same steps to the else block as well. So click on the, the property mediator in the then block and name it as discount and the value if the condition is satisfied is going to be eligible for discounts. Similarly, I'm clicking on the property mediator in the else block. The name of the property is going to be discount and the value is going to be not eligible. Now that we have completed the configuration of the filter mediator, let me use a, a payload mediator to construct the response and send it out to the service invoker. So I attached a payload factory here and this is going to be the structure of the response message that I'm going to send back. And I want the value of the description field to be populated dynamically. So I'm configuring it with $1. And whatever be the value that is set for the discount property after the execution of the filter mediator, I'll pass the value to the description field. So to do that, click on the add new element field, click on the argument type as uh, expression, and then click on the argument expression, select expression from the dropdown and say get property. Now here it's going to be the value of the property. So that's discount. Click on OK, click on finish. And now our font configuration is completed. To deploy the API, create a carbon application project by right clicking on the sample 11 Maven multi-module project, click on other, click on composite application project, click next, name it as sample 11 underscore car, select the sample 11 project, ESB project, click on next, select the parent, it's going to be sample 11, click on finish. Now the composite application project is ready. The car file is ready basically. Click on your broker. If it's not running, please do start the broker and click on the add and remove option to add the sample 11 car file. Click on add, click on finish. Now in this console, you will see the logs getting updated. Once you see successfully deployed carbon application with the name of your carbon file, that indicates a successful deployment. Now let's validate it. Now I'm in the admin console now to get the URL of my newly deployed API. To get the URL, search for the name that was a filter and here is the URL of my API. Selecting that, now I'm switching over to Postman to validate the API. I have Postman open now, paste the URL and change the HTTP method to post because in this case we want to post a message body. Click on the body and select the row and XML. Paste the XML content. And here you would see the category of the customer as platinum. So we are executing the first case, right? The positive case. So since it is platinum, I'm expecting a response saying the customer is eligible for discounts. Let's see. As you can see, I received a response back saying eligible for discounts, which means it has taken the then path of the filter mediator. Now let's try with a different category value. I'll change the category value to gold. Click on send. Now you will get not eligible. Now we have validated both the then and else part of the filter mediator. I'm back in the integration studio now. Let's look at the second condition type available with filter mediator. And now that's going to be XPath. Now in XPath, as you all know, we defined an XPath and a corresponding value against which we want to execute the condition. But now how XPath is different from the previous option, right? So we may come across situations where we need to take a decision based on two values, right? If you consider our scenario, let's say we want to take a decision on the discounts based on the category and let's say the customer ID. So you have two X conditions to validate. XPath has a support for that. So if you want to execute and or or condition, you'll have to use the XPath option. Whereas the previous option supports single conditions. Let me configure the XPath option with two conditions. That's a condition that I'm going to validate. So this means the category of the person should be platinum and the customer ID should be one, two, three, four, five, six, which seem to be a bit crazy. Now, this is my condition. The category of the person should be platinum and the customer ID should be one, two, three, four, five, six, which means I'm restricting the discounts only to one person. Now we have to configure the namespace as well. So I gave the namespace prefix here and provided 
the namespace, click on add, click on OK, and now the configuration is completed. Click on save and redeploy the car file to validate the condition. Once you see successfully deployed Carbon application with the name of your car file, it indicates a successful deployment. Now let's switch to Postman to validate. Here I'm using the same request message. The category remains gold and the value of the customer ID is 123456. Now, when I click on send, I received a not eligible message because only one of the condition is satisfied. Let me switch to platinum. It's eligible. Now it's a positive case. Now let me change the customer ID to 1234567. Again, the condition is not satisfied. So here we performed a and statement. So XPath is actually meant for that. Now let's see. Now let's see how the same flow will work with a JSON message. So this is the JSON message that I'm going to use. It'll have five fields inside and my condition is going to be on the category field and the customer ID field. It remains the same and I'm expecting an output with a field description having the value eligible for discounts. Let's see it in action. I'm back in the integration studio and since uh, the structure of the JSON is slightly different, we can take out all this namespace uh, related information. So I'll directly give category as uh, one of the field that I'm going to evaluate. And the second one is uh, going to be the customer ID, right? So I'll give customer ID and then I can take out this. So remove, yes. So I'm looking at two fields, category, platinum and customer ID 123456. Okay, now the configuration around the filter media is completed. Now in the payload factory, you can continue to use XML media type to construct a response. Once an XML response is constructed, to convert it into JSON, we have to set a property. So I'm going to use a property mediator for that. Use property mediator and set the value of message type. Select message type from here. Property scope should be access to and set the value application slash JSON. This simple setting would convert an XML into JSON response. Save it and redeploy the flow. I'm back in Postman, I've deployed the flow. Now I change uh, the message type to JSON. And here I have value platinum against uh, for the category field and customer ID 123456, which means I should receive a response saying the customer is eligible for promotions. Let's test it out. Yes, I received a JSON response See, eligible for discounts. Now let's try a negative scenario with a different customer ID. Yes, not eligible. Now I hope from this uh, you received a good understanding of the filter mediator and the applications of it. We'll have more mediators that support executing conditional statements in the upcoming videos. If you have any queries, please let me know. Otherwise, please move on to the next video.